despair sets in as our four podcasters begin covering E3 2017. A complete lack of tension erupts as everything is already leaked ahead of time. Sony realizes that they can't just have a whole bunch of trailers for games that aren't out in three years. Nintendo gets away with winning E3 just by having one title card. Will vaping take over the future of consoles? I can't believe Dave Lang is fucking dead. Next, True Route Radio. Does Spider have puss puss? I'll give you fan service next time too. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to True Route Radio, the podcast that already breaks a premise I fucking want to start from the beginning because I want to talk about E3. I'm your host, Trungasm, but you can call me Mom. And tonight, I have three friends who have very strong opinions about video games. As I introduce them, they'll tell me their favorite E3 moment ever, starting with Rising Superstar Liam. Hi there. My favorite E3 moment is, without a doubt, when uh, Nier Automata was announced at Square Enix's presser uh, a few years ago. It fucking blew my mind, and I've never had such a reaction to a video game announcement. And you can listen to that on the last episode. Austin Eruption. <laughs> Hello. My favorite E3 moment is when they announced Final Fantasy XIII as the Fabula Nova Crystalla series. And then that was short-lived. Very, very Ooh. short-lived. But it was so hype when it happened. I watched that trailer like 50 fucking times, man. <laughs> All right. And last, a guy that actually went to E3 this year, Elias. Hey, what's up? My favorite E3 moment is when Reggie acknowledged that he was a meme uh, in like 2013 or 2012, and that was honestly pretty great. (laughs) Okay, and I guess mine's a pretty easy answer when they announced um, Brawl and had everyone lost their shit at the trailer, especially when Wario farted and everyone died. (laughs) <laughs> the the bit with Snake Two was like such a good stinger. Yeah, <laughs> I wa- I rewatched that trailer like five times, and I'll probably go back and do it again after this just to hear the reaction. All right, so Sixth um, time. <laughs> Elias, um, you actually went to E three this year uh, for the first time. You want to tell us about it? Um, I sure did. Uh, I didn't know what to expect. I knew that it was going to smell bad. I knew that it was going to be crowded, and I knew I was going to uh, barely be able to play any games. Um, All of that ended up being uh, truer than I thought because I was not prepared, and I don't think the E3 committee was prepared for it being open to the public for the first time. And let me tell you, that was a nightmare. (laughs) I bet. Um, So for people who don't know, they opened up um, E3 to the public this year to 15,000 people, and tickets were $250. And apparently from what I'm reading, it was overcrowded, and they're reconsidering what they're going to do next year. Yeah, even even with the prices so high, it really didn't stop people from going. And like, I I hope they institute press only days like Gamescom and TGS because like I heard it was actually an issue for for some members of the press. So yeah, well, la- last year I, I went as press and I basically I played some indie games pretty easily, but anything like high profile, I wasn't able to play unless I you know made an appointment beforehand. Was it like that for you this year? Um, yeah, and unfortunately, uh, like I this is my first E three, obviously, and. A lot of my bosses knew how to book appointments and who to contact and how to do all of that. They didn't do any of that for me, so I had to just kind of flounder. So I ended up playing a bunch of weird games. I played a NASCAR game, um, NASCAR Heat 2. I played a bunch of weird indie games, um, and I just took my boss's appointments if they couldn't make them. Um, <laughs> but if I, yeah, if I hadn't made those appointments... Um, and those appointments had not been made for me, I wouldn't have been able to get into anything. It would have been impossible. Sega's booth to play Sonic Forces alone was at least over an hour line for Sonic Forces. Well, they, people want to spend 30 minutes making their avatars first. Yeah, Sonic Forces <laughs> looks dope, so... I did get to play that. That was pretty good. It was? Did you get to make an avatar too? No, they had two that I could pick from, and that was it. Uh, but I got to pick two different weapons, and I got to play as Modern Sonic, and that whole game feels real good. Like I'm pretty hyped for that. That's good to hear. Um, if you were to take away anything from that, um, like, would you go again next year? I honestly don't know. I mean, I, I really liked being there. It was really nice feeling like I had made it, I guess, so to speak, as a member of the gaming press. Like, I was at this big mecca of gaming um, that I've always wanted to go to uh, ever since I was, like, reading Destructoid back in 2010. And I was like, I have to be here. I have to cover this stuff. So that feeling, that rush was still there, but if I look at how tired I was at the end of it, if I look at how overcrowded it was, um, in one of the show floors, uh, I couldn't move. They had people actually shoving, physically shoving the whole crowd into a line, and that was a nightmare. 
And so if they, yeah, if they, it was terrible. It was like, um, you know, you see the footage from Japan, people getting shoved into the subways. It was very akin to that. So if they don't manage that again, they don't have a press only day. I don't know if I'll go next year. It was fun, but it was kind of, it was a little much. Would you say it was kind of like PAX? What? Like, have you been to PAX before? I have not, actually. I want to go, though. Because uh, that one's the one that's always open to the public as well. And I hear that A3 was actually worse than that in terms of lines. Oh. And the thing about um, going to PAX compared to E3 was when I went to PAX, I was going to press, so I was able to play pretty much anything I wanted just as long as I made the appointments. But uh, when you go to E3, you're competing with other press members who have the same privileges as you and also um, YouTube influencers and stuff like that. So I basically got barely anything when I was down there for E3 last year. Besides yeah, I got. I really got the impression that like all the PAX crowd just went to E3 and like that's just totally – like that quantity of people is just totally incompatible with what they had going on. Yeah, and at least PAX had 10 years of building up, um, you know, experience figuring out how to manage this stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, I, I mean, I applaud them for trying. It's 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 cool to reinvent yourself and stuff, but mm-hmm. uh, ho- hopefully they can take this feedback very seriously next year. It's going to be interesting uh, when we're all back down there, for, except for Austin, all back down there again in uh, two weeks for Anime Expo. Yeah, it'll be <laughs> nice to all be together I'm except for Austin. I'm super excited. Do you think there'll be remnants of New Donk City? <laughs> yeah. Um, some of the some of the stuff, like obviously, like the X Seed or the Atlas stuff, gets reused, so it saves them trouble moving it around for a while. Oh, of course, right? Because it's like the same convention center, same yeah. gear, same. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I guess we'll get started on all these conferences, and um, as we go bound them, I want you guys to rate them from one to five, in compared to every other conference at E3 ever. So, ever. I think our yeah. Okay. So, so I think not not just this year, but yeah. So obviously, I think all these will have pretty low scores compared to you know like last year, or the year before that. But we'll see how it goes. Yeah. All right, let's start with EA. Uh, what do you guys think about this one? Hmm. Uh. I have thoughts. Um, it was uh. It was a conference that was aggressively not for me, um, <laughs> and and that's okay. Uh, the The conference itself was fine, except for like the stuff that really stuck out as like negatives was like some of the people they had um, talking through the games were probably not uh, the best picks, uh, such as the the tag team duo talking over Need for Speed, um, who really just were not. I didn't feel like they were able to do it. Poor guys. Um, but as far as the actual conference itself, it was fine. Just none of it was for me. And it's one of those, like, am I just going to go to their concert to boo them situations? You know, where it's like, I left it and I was like, okay, A Way Out was really, really cool. I'm, I really think that game's awesome. And I guess Battlefront 2 looks pretty good. I'm not not that into Battlefront. And the Anthem teaser was neat. Um but but like I I have a hard time even even commentating on or commenting on on the sports games in any way because it's like it's like that thing where people complain about like why would you why would you give this game review to someone who doesn't like that type of game you know um, it, like, like who am I to say how good or bad those looked so I thought it was fine but like aggressively not for me um, <laughs> and if I if I had to score it I'd probably like a two and a half to three stars you know okay it wasn't a disaster you know like stuff wasn't actively malfunctioning all over the place uh mm-hmm. with 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 um, machines with humans yeah maybe. with machines and shit maybe. like there, there was no big fuck ups and like everything was nice i guess just sports you know so everything was also sports <laughs> yeah i am um kind of glad that a lot of these sports games have gotten like full story modes because even if i don't want to play the game i'm interested in how these tell these stories yeah definitely football movies are really fun and like building that kind of thing into a game just uh makes sense like i don't play i don't play sports games at all so i have a hard time seeing like the iterative changes between them so it's nice to see like big um i guess you could almost call them leaps when they're adding these big stories and stuff i'm curious to see what the next popular thing in sports games will be even if i don't actually plan to play them Mm mm-hmm um speaking about that uh need for speed guy um apparently he made a video afterwards explaining they like changed the teleprompter on him after he rehearsed it so that was the oh, oh, story for that right i see and yeah, apparently that, this guy this guy's like really popular on youtube and twitter so i guess you know he's done stuff before but he was just was taken totally aback by this one yeah no and i mean honestly it's fine like people made fun of him but i i hope i hope nobody sticks at it because like you know, it happens. Stage fright happens, you know, and, and and especially hearing the prompter got switched. Like, it's like, yeah, 
that sucks for him. But what are you gonna do? Yeah. Uh, my friend at um, Zach J Land says, "How many YouTube creators do you think EA will have on stage next year?" <laughs> Twice as many. That's an interesting question. I mean, why even have actual presenters anymore? You can just get YouTube people to do it. So probably a lot more. <laughs> It'll probably something be something said about honestly. that. Yeah, exactly. We'll we'll be on FIFA 19. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's something to be said about that where like people will give more of a shit if someone like a YouTube creator they like is talking rather than the nameless director of the game. Like as much as that person's the director of the game, like they're not going to be saying anything different from the script for the YouTube person. So, um, I, as I like, I would rather the the staff talk about it than the YouTube commentators as well. Like I would never want to do that myself. Uh, but I mean, I get it. It's I, I don't like it, but I get it. It's, but at know, the same time, oh, you know, talking pragmatic. about like wanting the creators to talk about their creations. Obviously, uh, there was another press conference we, we'll get to later. I'm assuming that uh-huh. only did that, and it paid off because you saw the passion, you know, as opposed to yes, I think I know which one you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, as yeah. opposed to uh, 360 no scope man x4 Sephiroth, you know, like, <laughs> or yeah, yeah. <laughs> Or the men in blazers, apparently. Yeah. I because, mean, like, I, I know why they brought them on. Because there's going to be... There's millions of people following these people. And there's they're going to be really excited to see the people they like on stage. But at the same time, mm-hmm. 90% of that audience does not know who they are. And are going to be very mm-hmm. uh, confused. I mean, you just got to think of it in terms of um, the direction E3 is going, right? I mean, E3, like, not even a decade ago, uh, was basically basically a trade show still. And with the prevalence of the press conferences getting shown year after year after year um, to the public and like they've become easier and easier to see, E3 has become such this brand and it's become a lot more like, I guess, consumer focused as opposed to press taking things and giving it to the consumers that they saw at E3. And so I feel like by being more consumer focused, by being more streaming focused, E3 is benefiting from having these YouTubers and having these streamers on stage because the people who are now interested in E3 are the people who watch those people. So I think from like a business standpoint and the direction the whole conference is going, that makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah, absolutely. So would it be hard to guess that a lot of you like a way out the most of everything there? Yeah, I think I think a way out looks really good. That looks fantastic. I I think I think so too. I think that was my yeah, just looking at the list, I think a way out was without without a doubt the winner. Uh, Anthem was neat, but it was like it was such a teaser. There wasn't really, you know, it was like okay, I'll see it tomorrow. Um, yeah. At Battlefront, and eh, I'm I'm not big into it, uh, but yeah, a way out was definitely the winner. I really like the director. He's super charismatic. He he used to be a film director, um, mm-hmm. and this is only his second game, so his track record is pretty fucking sterling so far. So. And like Bro- Brothers was like my game of the year that year, and um, it's yeah, funny little story. <laughs> I still actually, to play that. Um, I actually played through that entire game with my brother. We're all, we were both sharing one controller and just moving one mm-hmm. of the characters. So <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm really excited to see how. Because I used to play games like this with like um, all my other friends too, like um, Army of Two and shit like that. Mm-hmm. And just I having the ca- game. yeah, having a campaign play out where both of you are having slightly different experiences, but just going to, through it together ends up being you know something you can't really replicate just playing a single player game. Definitely, and like the way that uh, the way that this game handles it, where like some people like one character will be going through. Uh, like a cutscene style event while someone else is like walking around and doing other shit and then like trading that off and occasionally cooperating completely like or I mean probably more likely than not it'll be mostly cooperating completely but as far as what we saw um like that that variation in in like cooperation seems really neat there that was or like my favorite parts of uh, the Saints Row and Saints Row games and the heists in GTA Online when you would split up the party to like do things together uh I'm pretty interested in the game myself, but I'd still think Battlefront was probably the highlight for me. Just because I like the concept of like mixing and matching the the, the generations and everything. Like seeing stormtroopers fighting the droids was pretty interesting, and uh, it, it, since they are listening to the consumer this time, I'm interested to see what they have to do. Yeah, there's no uh, there's no season pass for it this time around, right? No, yeah, they. I mean, they're having to compete with something like. Uh, Overwatch now, mm-hmm. which is free content. So yeah, it'll be interesting uh, to say the least. Yeah, it, it is. It is nice that they they moved away from the season pass thing because despite like Overwatch existing and and other you know big competitive titles existing nowadays, um, 
I don't think they had to. Uh, it is Star Wars. They could have just powered mm-hmm. through, and they probably would have done fine. So, so that was kind of reassuring. And 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 EA has been kind of pushing in that direction slowly. They've been getting better year over year, but it's it's been a progressive a progressive turn. Oh yeah, like like a big ship or some shit, you know? Yeah, I'm trying to give you a good mental image. Do you think they missed an opportunity by not having any single player stuff on stage, even though they brought in the main character and just resort to showing off esports? Yeah, I, I do actually. Mm-hmm. I really think they ought to have shown a little bit of the campaign. Um, that being said, I don't know how much of a difference it'll actually make in the long run, rather than it just being like core consumers going like, ah, I wish I would have seen it. Because like now they get to do like a really tight focused marketing campaign for what, five months? So I don't think it'll really matter in the long haul. But it would have been nice, that's for sure. Yeah, I would have liked to see a little more of that because... uh I'm a big fan of the old Battlefront games, and I would have really liked to see that. However, like as a consumer, I, because I know that's there, I'm going to probably buy it anyway. So they didn't really have to show it off. They just had to say it's there, and they already have me, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was just some of the, some of the footage they showed was kind of awkward. Like where they were to yeah. show a player like running into a wall for five seconds, or someone just dying randomly, and like yeah, they, it's real. The best the, the best moment was like when they were about to like do a spotlight on Ray from episode seven showing up and then she just dies and then eats shit immediately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's always, it's always a risk to show like live multiplayer matches like that. And I, I don't feel like it ever really pays off. Yeah. Oh, no. Cause it like, if it really paid off and you got like an amazing special moment to happen, that would be dope. But I genuinely can't think of a time where at like a reveal for a game, they had like live gameplay really pay off in a meaningful way as opposed to either being meh or like downright uh silly looking a lot of it some shots in battlefront a lot of it just feels cringy like i just think when i think of live gameplay the first thing i think of is that killer instinct reveal from like two years ago and that whole thing i don't know if you guys remember that on stage but that was just yeah that was that was real cringe inducing and that's the fact that that's where my mind goes when I think of live multiplayer showings of games, I think is very telling of the overall quality of those for the most part. I, I much prefer live to scripted gameplay. Hmm. I'll tell you I, right I, now. I, I can say, as someone who, yeah. well, we'll talk about that later when we get to games like State of the Cave, but I can agree with, I prefer organic gameplay segments instead of uh, really scripted, I don't know what's real, I don't know what's fake anymore kind of shit. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, for the multi, yeah, on the, the Killer Instinct thing, I remember that specifically because like that was a real bummer because I, I like that game a lot. Uh, it's good. I think I think they said like there was there was major latency on the monitor they had access to, which was like one of the big causes for it, which sucked. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, regardless, like that's the risk, and it's like it, it's eh, eh. <laughs> and it didn't really come off as the f- footage of Valve um, front really didn't come off as cool. It came off as goofy. Cause... Yeah. All right, so picture this. The first time you see this game, you see a whole bunch of droids come down from a ship. And all running around like little ducks in circles and jumping. (laughs) Yeah, man. (laughs) Well... You know, to be honest, I, I know a lot of people really hate it. The like Ubisoft's um, like co-op videos that they do, where they have like uh, you know heavily scripted actors, you know, talking through the situation and stuff. But like the reason I didn't like the Battlefront thing was because if I'm not mistaken, when it when it cut to the footage of the gameplay, like at the end of the of the conference, it was just like part way into a round, and like I was having a hard time following what they were trying to show me, if anything. Uh, maybe I'm remembering incorrectly, but like I do think that you know while there is stuff to complain about for Ubisoft's presentation, I think the style of presentation we're starting at the beginning of a round, walking through what we're doing, what stuff is, what are your options, stuff like that. I do think that works really well. Yeah, I prefer um, that for sure. Yeah, as 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 fake as it is, like it's it's easy enough for me to just be like, well, they're actors, but this is still pretty much what the game will play like yeah. whether it's going to look exactly like that or whether my friends are going to sound exactly like that that's you know subject of debate but like i can at least watch you know them tell me okay this is how this works this is how this works instead of you know having having a youtuber having them constantly talk about how great the graphics were how impressive the graphics are 
Those trespass. That, that, was a, that was a very recurring thing there, yeah. And you have to get someone changing a camera constantly and trying to find the best action. Because the reason why um, games like Player Unknown's Battlegrounds are so popular is you get to see one guy's like really unique experience and just focus on that one guy trying to figure out, strategize, do what he wants to do instead of jumping around, hoping to get someone in the middle of a good kill and them, them flying off into the boundaries of space and being told to go back to the main battlefield. Yeah, Counter Strike has a similar appeal in that regard. Like Counter Strike and um, Siege, Rainbow Six. Uh, what's it called? Siege. Thank you, uh, Sieg. Where you know it's 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 much more intimate, and you like you're able to follow a player's train of thought. I guess. Yeah. Okay. Um. I guess we'll end the E3 talk with just one more thing. Um. Regarding the need for speed footage, mm. all it really made me want is a, like a modern day burnout. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, I felt the same way. The the crashing really reminded me of burnout, and actually. On that game, I gotta say, uh, some of the some of the systems they had were were pretty nifty looking, like you know, switching vehicle on the fly and stuff like that. Like there were there were ideas in there where I was like, okay, that's I, neat. Not for me, but that's neat. I did like get my hands on it. Um, and you saying that you wished that like, you wanted a modern day burnout, playing it made me feel that way because when I was crashing cars into other cars and crashing them into the guardrails, that felt really good. But the process of getting to that just felt like. I don't know if this is reflected, um, like when you watch it, it looks pretty speedy, but when you're playing it, it just feels kind of sluggish and feels kind of uh, finicky and squirrely, and it doesn't feel like that good arcade feel that the old Burnout games had, and it feels like they're trying to, like, they're trying to mesh. Like split the difference? Kind yeah, of? and I just don't know how that's going to pay off, but I do like the whole, like, switching between characters and cars on the fly. That's really cool. All right, um, so... Final score, what would we give it from uh, 1 to 5? I'd give this one uh, 2. Same. Mm. Yeah, 2 sounds about right to me. Yeah, I'm still standing by my, like, 2.5 to 3, and it just mostly just wasn't for me. Like, the com- like, the, the conference itself wasn't offensive. There was just not many games no. up my alley. Yeah. yeah. But then again, this is your, your own personal yeah, uh, that, that That's exactly yeah, it, and I feel like a... 50 to 60 mark is kind of where I where I feel it was. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't offensive. It was just, it was it was fine, I guess. You know. It happened. Yeah. It ha- it, it yeah, exactly. It was it was a, a good taster for the beginning yeah. of E3. I guess, I guess my only, my only like, really big problem was that was basically the only conference on that one day, and I just had to wait a whole another day to get more news out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's move on to Xbox, um, Microsoft conference. So, what do you guys think about the console? <laughs> Five hundred dollars. <laughs> it's um, it's a cool piece of kit, that's for sure. And you know, Digital Foundry did some great videos on it earlier in the year, where they where they were invited out to Microsoft to check it out. And you know, it's without a doubt is actually the most powerful console that will be on the market. And I gotta say, I am genuinely impressed at how small it is. It's fucking tiny. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, as someone who owns a PS4 Pro already, uh, I don't they were not able to sell me on it at all i feel yeah um we'll we'll get into the games after but like they only showed two new like internal exclusives right right Uh, ori and um and forza and those coming out um, on the pc anyway uh, they are, they are, but, like, I, I mean, I don't have a PC that could run them, so for me, it's, like, okay. it's like Xbox is my way of playing them, but, like, I really don't feel like I need an Xbox One X to experience the next Ori, and I, I'm i not a Forza guy, so, they, like, they really didn't have anything there for me at all, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. In, in regards to buying the Xbox One X, that is to say. There were other games that I, I really liked seeing, but mm-hmm. uh, as far as the console goes, especially, I, I'm in Canada, it's uh, it's five ninety nine. Um Yeah. <laughs> I kudos to them for, for uh, pricing it at five ninety nine in Canada though I gotta say uh, because five hundred U S dollars actually converts to six seventy four Canadian mm, eesh. so they actually that's actually like seventy five dollars down from what the real conversion would be so kudos to that I guess but it's still six hundred dollars and I I can't it's a very nice piece of kit if I won one in a contest I'm sure I'd be very happy to have it <laughs> uh, if you didn't have a PS four Pro I guess maybe. But right now, I'm just uh, for me, they weren't able to sell me. Very cool kit. Yeah. But I, I really don't like the name at all. Um, it sounds no, that's not because great. X sounds way too similar to S. And you don't X- like the bone, bone X? X. Well, yeah, I don't <laughs> like the bone X. And people are saying, oh, but it spells Xbox if you look at all the letters. But that has to include the fact that if you count 
the B in box as his that, own letter too. It doesn't which make is sense. incorrect. Which is incorrect because <laughs> yeah. Xbox is the proper name. It's yeah. not capital X, capital B. So yeah. I'm just a little confused as to who this is for. Uh, Same. Because so you have an Xbox One. You got it at launch. Yeah, you spent five hundred dollars on it for the fucking Connect version, right? Okay, and then they're like Xbox One S. This one has four K, and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna upgrade. And then less than a year later, they they finally are like, all right. Scorpio's coming out. It's Xbox One X. It's five hundred dollars. By the time you spent all that money, you could have gotten a fucking good ass gaming PC. Yep. Who is this? I for? feel this. I feel this is only for people who have somehow stayed out of this generation of gaming entirely and say, "I want the new best system." And then, but if you're watching E3, you're probably more of an enthusiast than that leads on to believe. Yeah, right. uh, P- I think it was PC Gamer who were saying actually that like you were actually kind of looking at like. S- 650 plus to kind of get an xbox one x comparable pc um so it is actually i I think most pc sites are saying it is actually like not quite replicable as a pc at 500 dollars yet because they are doing some pretty cutting edge stuff but i mean i think at the end of the day as much as xbox is trailing in second place uh, as far as sales go you know it still does sell millions a year like over 10 million oh sure yeah yeah um and and I'm sure there is going to be a certain percentage of conversions. Just like with PS4 Pro, it's like it's not going to be selling more than the base unit. Um, but I definitely do think that with PS4 Pro on the market, they have their fucking work cut out for them. Like if PS4 Pro didn't exist, I would think it's more viable. But being that it's more like significantly more expensive than a PS4 Pro, like that's what really that's what really makes me makes me feel like yeah. it's gotta it's gonna have a tough time like besides the pc thing because if you're gonna go pc you're gonna go pc but for someone who's on a console like or who wants to play on a console like the ps4 pro is right there and it's it's not as powerful it's not uh but, but it has you know games. if the if the difference yeah and i mean if the difference between assassin's creed origins is like 30 fps on both slightly nicer checkerboarded 4k on xbox one x then i don't think it's worth it you know like that's pretty much um, what it seems like it's gonna be too like obviously speculation but i just i don't see the value especially with no exclusives technically yeah i think i think their inability to confirm new big exclusives for it this year is kind of i don't want to say it's downfall because like it's not it's not too late they have next year they have the future you know um but their inability to even really lock down something else that's big is is troubling if like you know if they'd been able to lock down like anthem Mm -hmm. then that would that would have been compelling that would have been compelling because that game looks real pretty and looks real fun so but, but then, I don't think Ori and Forza, and I think they had um, Super Lucky's Tale as well. Crackdown uh, Three, a... guys. Oh yeah, and crack... yeah. Sorry, I was just uh, just mentioning the newly announced ones. But yeah, oh, yeah. Crackdown Three also. Yeah. Um, but yeah, not being able to confirm any new genuine exclusives, kind of, you know. And I mean, kind of sours that. They have the problem too now, and I mean, this isn't really a problem for me because I I mainly I have all the consoles. I mainly play PC and my Switch, but. A lot of their exclusives you can get on the PC at this point, so they don't really feel that exclusive. Um, Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's like PS4's exclusives are you can't get them anywhere else, and that's a selling point. The Switch is exclusive. You can't get anywhere else. That's a selling point. I feel like they're less of a selling point, especially because if you look at the Xbox One exclusives um, compared to the other exclusives in the other system – they're not as compelling, by and large, um, in my personal opinion, for my personal tastes. Um, and they have the added thing of, like, you can get this on your computer. So, yeah. Yeah, and I feel like that is kind of – I feel like that's kind of a problem. Now, granted, I do think that the cool thing about the conference with the Xbox, Xbox, Xbox One X is – Xbox. The Xbox, <laughs> yes. Um they were showing off some player unknowns battlegrounds. Um, they were showing off some Black Desert. They were showing off some games that if a the, un- the unfinished games conference. Yes, <laughs> but they were showing off some games. Sorry, go on. No, yeah, they're showing off some games that have historically <laughs> just been um, on the PC. I mean, Black Desert's been on the PC for years at this point, and I do think if you can't get a gaming PC 
and you want to play these games, that's really cool of them to try to get them on this system that can run them. That's a really um, that's a really neat thing. I think that's a really neat focus. Um, it's just not for me because I have a PC, you know. But that's a cool thing they're doing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I always think it's hard to to make the PC comparison because sure. again, if you're gonna play on a PC, you're gonna play on a PC. Sure. If you're gonna play on a console, like like for me, I don't like playing on pc Mm -hmm. uh generally because like that was my work for a long time Uh. and i I was just fed up of it uh so like i i have an xbox one a vanilla xbox one and for me when i think of killer instinct it's like yeah it's 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 on xbox for me you know but i totally get how that that flips over and for pc people it's like well it's on steam i don't have to i don't have to give a shit about xbox so right i think it's nice that they have they offer the options to everyone for sure Um, yeah but but you're right it does cheapen their the perception of their exclusives, I guess, um, because they're no longer like quote unquote true exclusives. You know, uh, not that that actually matters, but it, I think it does cheapen the perception. Like I do agree with you on that, Elias. The whole conference felt like these are some really great games you're showing off, but I already have a PC, so I don't need to buy your console. Yep. Yes. Like, I'm gonna play did. Metro on a PC. Like that's that's a PC first franchise. It always has been. So like, I'm really excited about a new Metro. But you know, yeah. And the state of it is, I I bought my PC for a thousand dollars six years ago. And besides upgrading the video card, I haven't had to spend any other money on it. I can play everything on high and ultra. Nice. Yep. So unfortunately, I guess they're in a kind of tough spot. I think there will be a market for this because there's some people who just refuse to play games on PC. Or or haven't caught up yet, but I I'm really curious how this is gonna turn out. Yeah, and I mean even not on PC, a lot of these games are on PS4 as well. So I think that was the biggest weakness as far as like selling people on Xbox One and the console was like everything was a multiplat. Like yeah, that's that's it. And yeah. Also, I'm curious. Um, so they're gonna have apparently some form of liquid cooling on this thing. How is that gonna work without you having to do like maintenance uh, or it, it, just it's it's. So it's not liquid cooling. That's actually been something that uh, that's that's been mis mis. Uh, okay, good. Tell me, tell me how it it's, works then. <laughs> it, it, it's it's. Uh, I believe it's vapor based cooling, which okay. is very different. Oh, okay, right. um, oh, it's vaping. It's, cool. It, yeah, it's basically vape vaping. <laughs> this is part of the um, podcast where I stick in an image of um, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but it, but but it, it it is different. Like there, it's nowhere near as fragile as like liquid cooling and stuff like that. Uh, I did see a lot of places reporting it as liquid cooling, and a lot of people and uh, YouTubers and etc. reporting it as liquid cooling, but it's it's a vapor chamber, so it's, it's gotcha, a different. Gotcha. Uh, okay, that's good. Different then. technology. <laughs> yeah, because. I already have friends who have liquid cooling, and they have to do maintenance pretty regularly, so it's just a weird yeah, thing. Yeah, or else the fish die. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure, do any of you guys care about Forza at all? No. Uh, no. I do when Sumo's making it. <laughs> uh, no, but I do have something to say, which is I really wish you'd stop fucking showing cars on stage. Especially 911 cars? Like, f- fucking stop with your Porsche 911 like holy shit I know about it now did you like like who are you like nobody's gonna buy this car I'm sorry nobody watching this conference live is gonna buy this car I want the Porsche 911 (laughs) I get that it's like a sell for car nuts I get that I really do but like holy shit what percentage of people are flipping out over the Porsche 911 while everyone else is rolling their eyes. I and like it, it was in the PC gaming show as well. What? When Forza came <laughs> the the car itself wasn't, but when when they came up for Forza at the PC gaming show, they made sure to highlight how they exclusively revealed the Porsche 911 on the Microsoft stage. And it's like I found it the most like patronizing thing of the whole conference. Cause I, I I I don't know. I felt like it was like they were talking about TV again. You know, like yeah, you know, I, I feel it's, it. it's a completely different topic. Like, stop talking about cars. I, I know you love cars, but stop. Yo, man, I feel it. A lot of a lot of companies do that too. Not just Microsoft. Remember when fucking Square Enix did it with Final Fantasy fifteen? Ab- oh, absolutely, God. yeah. Stop. And at least with all these promotions, people at least people buy cup noodles and they buy Mountain Dew and Doritos. I don't know yeah, how many people yeah. would buy fucking new cars off a game. Yeah, there was a fucking Destiny strike that came on a can of Monster or Rockstar uh, or some Red shit. Bull, and Red I, Bull. Red Bull. And I bought a can for it. And you know what? That wasn't hard. It cost me a buck fifty. 
Mm-hmm. You can't. I don't care about the Porsche. Nobody can buy the Porsche 911. How much does that cost? <laughs> Do you want me to Yo, look up right now? At, at least no. Like, I'm gonna look it up. You guys can keep I'll focusing in like on years, important probably. things. At least if you're gonna, <laughs> at least if you're gonna reveal this fucking car, give it away in a sweepstakes. Be like, like, say, like yeah. say one person in the crowd can win this car. And no, the gonna gonna car with, shit. Pull another ad. <laughs> say it rising. comes with a pre-order for Por- uh, for Forza. Pull an Evan Rising. Be like, buy the game and you can get the you can get the car and then never give the car away. I don't know something. They'll just show us a car. Just fucking lie to us. <laughs> Yeah. Pre-order bonuses evolving live on stage. <laughs> All right. Um, Metro. Um, besides being really scripted, I think it looks cool. Oh man. Was that oh the man. Days later music in the trailer. Yeah, that was that was, was. the twenty. Everyone was pointing out to me on Twitter that was the twenty-eight days later music. I, I'll play it right now so everyone can hear it while we're talking. I love Metro so much. Uh, the Last Light, uh, not so much. Uh, Metro twenty thirty-three. I adore that game. I adore how it just was the perfect marriage of survival horror and shooter in a way that I feel like most survival horror shooters are not that. I felt like I had to like do a lot of resource management and all kinds of cool shit that I'm a total nerd for like that. And so if they can recapture that feeling with this and have it be like above ground open world, um, that'll be my shit. Um, I, I heard apparently it's not open world as much as it is just large arenas. Okay. That yeah, that point on. I'm still fine with yeah, that. Yeah, they, they did. Yeah. I mean, it looks cool. I, I'm still, I still kind of uh, prefer Stalker to Metro. Um, okay, sure. But they always kind of have, they always kind of have overlapping vibes and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm not much of a first person shooter guy, but it, it was neat looking. Um, the, the only thing I didn't like about the um, presentation of Metro was I, I find that uh third person and first person shooters like when they get to the bit of the demo where they're slowly walking around and panning the camera about i have a hard time like keeping my interest where where it's like okay i'm just gonna slow down and look at the environment before we get to the one enemy encounter in this demo and it's like ah (laughs) ah but that's more of a commentary on presentation than than the game itself the game looks the game looks good absolutely you're you're not going to be in tunnels this entire time. <laughs> yeah, like the story is taking major steps. I guess that's trying to, what I'm trying to say. I mean, it is going to be missing Uncle Bourbon, and I think that that's a tragedy because Uncle Bourbon is like one of the best gaming side characters I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, you never know if there's some kind of cameo or stuff that happens again. Yeah, here's hoping. Remember how forced uh, Harold was in Fallout Three? Oh man, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember this old character? Well, now he's dead. I hope you enjoyed that. Remember this, kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah metro looks cool i'm I, i'm excited um i really hope it doesn't feel as shootery as last light did uh so here's hoping mm-hmm. and they'll say well they charged for dlc with last light so you can make the game play like the old one. Oh, i forgot about that that was real bad yeah it that was real bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was like a pre-order bonus right yeah you, got, you could buy it play the game something. like the old game you like i hate video okay. games guys <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, PUBG, but that's player unknowns. PUBG, yeah. PUBG. What's the- someone was gonna get the rights to player unknowns battlegrounds, and I called it was gonna be Microsoft, and I was right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've seen a lot of people play that game. I haven't played it myself yet. It looks interesting, but it it exists already, so that mm-hmm. was nothing new for me. Well, it is early access, and the uh, yeah, I've actually played like. 40 hours of the game now and like the last I've seen I've seen your discord and your uh, steam yeah, logs <laughs> we're, we're kind of always going at it but uh have you made number one yet oh yeah uh, we've won like uh five times or something like that that's a lot of chicken feels a lot of chicken dinners uh game is actually excellent <laughs> mm-hmm. like like even for early access like it, it's very rare that you see a game updated so frequently and get better consistently and start running better on other people's computers uh I have a blast with it, and I hope that the version that the Xbox gets... I don't know if it's going to be like a, you know, right out of the gate, this isn't early access or anything like that, but it is solid. And I think that that's actually going to be a big sell for console gamers, specifically. I'm gonna I'm gonna gonna do a call out on Brendan Green. I really wish the game would change his name to Brendan Green's Battlegrounds. Is there Player Unknowns? Because Player Unknowns is just the most... Oh, I really don't like that. It's, it's not Br- Brendan Green's Players Unknown's Battlegrounds. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I want. <laughs> but yeah, it would be, you know, like a Sid Meier or a American McGee kind of situation. I actually really dig the Player Unknown's you thing. You do? <laughs> at, at a certain point, it's just like, all right, I'm in. 
It makes Let's for go a good acronym. Name. Like, if yeah. it was just Brendan Greens, it would just be Big Bug. It would be BGBG, though, and that would be the coolest fucking shit. Oh, man, it'd be like actually BMing in your title. Okay, all right. <laughs> I'm down for that. We we just call it um, PUBG at this point. True. PUBG. PUBG or PUG, or PUBG depending on how we feel. <laughs> All right. Um, Minecraft, besides the cross-platform play, that trailer didn't really do anything for me. That lady made me really happy, though. Like, out of all the all of the different presenters, she actually looked like she liked video games, and she seemed to be having a lot of fun, like, saying super duper, and that made me really happy. Like, everything <laughs> else took it so ser- itself so seriously, and she was like, this is awesome! I love video games! I was like, okay, I appreciate that energy in this uh yeah. Well, Press did conference. you know she was actually, like, a fan on a YouTube, like, broadcaster of Minecraft before joining the company? I had no idea. That's kind of cool. Yeah, she was, um, Red Spray did a video on her because she was playing pretty, pretty bad at the time, but, uh, she was known as Minecraft Chick, and then she got hired by a company now. She's, like, one of the heads, so. That's cool. Yeah. I had no idea. I gotta say it was funny for them to be like, all right, the Xbox One X, the most powerful video gaming console, Minecraft. <laughs> And 4K, and they're like, all right, look at these Bloom and HDR filters, motherfucker. You like Bloom? Minecraft's got Bloom now? Let's go. I mean, people shit on it all the time, but the resource, the Minecraft actually takes a lot of computing to get it to work properly, because you have to oh, yeah. factor in everything in the world working together. Speaking of which, um, so, oh, I forgot but Bunny Hop invited me to play Minecraft with him, but <laughs> oops, I'm admitting that I'm live. Time to reject that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Super right, Bunny Hop um... sucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, State of Decay 2. Um, actually, I think they stayed on all the footage a little bit too long, but I actually preferred showing like in-game engine stuff that looked like it actually happened in-game. Yeah, no, congratulations on their Guinness World Record of world's longest uh, single game shown in a press conference. It was fucking... Abs- I felt like 10... It was not 10 minutes, I don't think, but it fucking felt like 10 minutes. I don't it was... think I watched that. I was watching the conference. I might have zoned out. <laughs> yeah, State of Decay 2 had an extremely extended E3 trailer. Um, and State of Decay is, like, a good game and everything. Uh, so I have no doubts that this game will also be a good game. Uh, but, like, the trailer was the most basic, like, this is a zombie survival game stuff. And, like, that that's what State of Decay 2 kind of is. It's a pretty basic zombie survival game. Well, especially since um, it's apparently re- using a lot of, a- like, the landscape and assets from 1. Just better. Yeah, but I, I, I question their decision to stay on it for such an absurdly long time. Um, but, I mean, it looked fine, I guess. The, the longer I watched it, the more bored I got. But it, <laughs> yeah, be... it looked fine, I guess. Here, uh, 7 minutes 31 Jesus. Is, uh, is the count. <laughs> that's so. uh, that's a tenth of the conference yeah like being there live i mean even with all this i think it was a two-hour conference actually, yeah it was a really long one like even with all the spectacle and bombast that uh that state of decay 2 thing took the wind right out of my sails i was like okay i get it resource management i get it permadeath i get it zombies okay i played the first one i understand uh that, that's but- some people's jam um that's not my jam so for some people, those seven minutes are probably great. For me, I was like, okay, can you show a different game now? Yeah, all the, all the concepts they were showing were so ubiquitous and simple that, like, I really didn't feel like I needed that much. And the narration of, like, oh, we live in this zombie world. We got to make hard black and white choices. Should I kill this person who turned into a zombie? Or should I cure the- Like, Like, fucking, I played the first episode of Walking Dead. I get it. <laughs> we all played it. We, we get it. Your peaks Stop. are gonna be very fun to deal with this episode, Liam. <laughs> yeah, it's it's true. It's true. I'm going nuts. Uh, no, but the game looks good. Yeah, game looks good. But like co-op two apparently shit. now, so that'll be really fun. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I do gotta say I'm a little tired of zombies. Mm-hmm. That's fair. I was tired well, of zombies. We're gonna talk about certain zombie Dead game later on. Yeah. As well. I miss the days gone by when we didn't have to talk about zombies so much. Ha! Yeah. Okay. um, (laughs) Deep Rock Galactic. It looked like Minecraft, kind of, except with dwarves. Anything for you guys? Seems like it has a bit more of a combat focus. It it was neat, but that's never really been my kind of... Like, crafting... Games with crafting as, like, a central thing has never really been super big for me. Yeah, I feel that. Did did your your mom buy you, like, Mega Blocks instead of uh, Legos? No, I was was a Lego boy. I was a Lego boy, but... uh... Yeah, you know. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, like, if if I want to build stuff, I will use Legos. I don't want to use a controller between me and Legos. Fair. Good point. Um, I don't know. Build that gun plot, dude. That's what you gotta do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this this next thing was my worst thing at all of this E3. Um, the Darwin Project. <laughs> you can't see it, but I'm face palming really hard right now. It was uh, really oh, painful. Okay. Um, yeah, the character designs were so boring. Uh, but I gotta say, I did laugh when the Scream Lords started Scream Lording. Oh yeah. Because uh, so it was so, it was it was kind of out of nowhere. It surprised so me. So I was for, like, okay, that's funny. Say, so say you're for view people didn't watch. Say you're just randomly seeing a new trailer for a game with a generic like kind of like TF, not straight up TF2, but you know, a, I, I want to be Disney or I want to be Pixar or DreamWorks, and I want to make this cool character animated thing. Characters kill off each other in a battle royale style. Then you just see this bearded guy who named himself um, Jethro Toll start screaming at you about this new esports thing that was really, really scripted. And then at the end, you see this logo for a game that shows up for like two seconds, then disappears. Then you forget about the game and never look it up again. That was the Darwin yeah. Project. There was a bit of an old world charm uh, with him screaming about the game. Uh, <laughs> it did make me laugh, and I kind of liked yeah, it at the beginning. Feel. It went on a bit, but uh, well, the the, char- the character designs just really didn't do it. What for What PUBG all. was and Overwatch? <laughs> right, the yeah. reason that we remember it is because of the old guy screaming. Yeah, so, in that regard, they did so a good maybe, job. You know, that'll be <laughs> what goes down in history. It's like the most yeah. impactful, memorable moment of E3 <laughs> because, like, the game <laughs> itself, no one. No one, I don't even know what it is. I couldn't tell. All I could concentrate on was the yellow shirt man yelling. <laughs> okay, I'll give you that then. He was he was um, rusing us this entire time. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, I like the, the introduction for this next game they did as well, where um, Spencer came on stage and said, We want to bring broad, diverse new games to Xbox. Here's Goku in Dragon Ball Z Fighters. <laughs> <laughs> like... Like, broad, diverse games, here's the most palatable anime game to America. Right. Granted, like, it looks uh, very good, but this yeah, verbiage absolutely. beforehand. He also called it hilarious. <laughs> I don't know if anyone remembers that. I did. But he said... That just seems like one of those things where people say, oh, anime is so wacky. It's so goofy. You know, it's like, um, Damn, that game looks fucking great, though. It's What a fucking bummer that this game, you know, did not get its first reveal at that conference for a lot of people it would have been the first time they saw it but like we did hear about it ahead of time we did get some screenshots ahead of time i i wish i wish that that hadn't leaked out a lot of stuff this e3 leaked so out. like lots of the big stuff leaked i didn't out, so. like follow any leaks or anything like that i was just like I've, I've been too busy working and i'm like you know what i'll i'll let e3 just happen instead of looking up stuff so mm-hmm. i had my fucking my ass blown out when that trailer came on <laughs> looks looks good. Frieza looks fucking amazing. Yeah, and the yeah. moment they did a good thing too, where it wasn't just a cinematic thing. They showed they showed actual gameplay, and then you immediately mm-hmm. knew as a fighter, a uh, fighting game fan, what was going on. And it was just, it was you know, it was a combination of all those things you wanted in a fighting game when you were a kid. That was just too, way too crazy at the time. Yeah, yeah. I um mm. I got I got a little bit of uh, pressing at the Bandai Namco booth about that game, and there the mechanical depth of that game is really like it's on a guilty gear blast blue level and that is super exciting it was weird seeing it at an xbox conference but that game looks excellent mm-hmm. well i think it helps out with from microsoft to get these things shown on their conference because sure. that's what we'll we, 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 we said it before but that's what they're going to associate it with from now on instead of the ps4 absolutely mm-hmm. Ooh, we're gonna we're probably gonna get to see it at anime expo too now i'm really fucking excited. oh yeah man i'm actually yeah that's true yeah okay well, okay, that's a highlight for us. <laughs> Microsoft certainly got a, a long way to go until they get to like uh, Sony PSX 2016 levels of showing Japanese games, like fucking Danganronpa 3 East, like all on stage, like fuck. Yeah, well, considering the Xbox isn't doing that well in Japan, then it might not happen. We need to. We need I to wish make it was. Blue Dragon 2 happen. That's that's how it will save it in Japan. No, don't say that. <laughs> uh, Miss Walker is announcing a new game soon, so. Hey. Twenty second. Right? I hope it's not Blue Dragon Two. It better be. It better be Blue Dragon Two. I'm ready for the glorious return of Kluke. <laughs> I also hope it's not Blue Dragon. Oh man, am I the only <laughs> Blue Dragon? 
I literally made a video right before E3 that was like top 10 games that are never going to get a sequel. And I put Mistwalker as a company making actual RPGs in there because Cryon was canceled. And I'm sitting there, you're like, Kaluk. And I'm like, no, no, <laughs> not this. <laughs> All right. Um, Black Desert, probably one of the best character creators. Game's not that fun to play. Yes. Would you agree? That's what I hear. Okay. All right. Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, like, they had announced that it was coming to consoles in, like, March earlier this year. Like I said, they were wor- they, they were said they were working on console releases. Mm-hmm. So, like, this one wasn't really a new announcement either. It was just kind of like, yeah, let's get that in there. All right. This next one's called The Last Night. The, the, I like the visual style and how it looks like it reminds me of, I actually saw this game a few years ago. I remember, yeah, uh, yeah. and, and, uh, project Octopath Traveler was announced since then. And I remember when Octopath Traveler came out, I was like, what was that game called again? And then, oh, here it is again. Uh, the visuals are really nice. I gotta say, uh, but otherwise I'm, I'm not super interested in it, but the graphics are nice, you know? Oh yeah. No, definitely. It'll mix for some good gifts. I, 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 I tend to struggle. It already has, in fact. Yeah. <laughs> I tend to struggle through like a lot of story-based 2D indie games. I don't think it's just because of their genre, but like even Night in the Woods, which I really liked, like by the end of it, I was like, okay, I'm kind of done holding the left button and just letting it happen. Yeah, I guess I'll plug him, but Matt, um, Matt and Willie are doing a Let's Play, and although I was really enjoying it at first, yes. it's kind of dra- this, the game's kind of dragging on at this point for me. Yeah, I know. LPs with Matt and Willie are awful. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. Um, the Artful Escape. Um, do you even know how this... I don't know how this game plays. It looks cool, but... I need to re-Google this one. You're like one. a guitar was... lady. Oh, yeah, this one, right. Uh, Is it, I was hoping it would be some kind of rhythm platform, but I have no idea how it actually plays. Yeah, no, I I wasn't... I, I couldn't really tell. Uh, based on the, the website, I'm on the website now, it says action, adventure, exploration, narrative-driven, musical, laser, light battle kind of game. Survival, which open makes, world, zombie. Buzzword, buzzword, buzzword. Which, early access. Yeah, which, which makes me think it's not a rhythm Rogue game, like. but like, I, I looked at the art and I was so not into the character design that I didn't even bother Tower looking defense. any further. I was just like... Eh. Dating sim. Um, Walking simulator. <laughs> It has like a broken ag look to it a little bit um what, what I, I like bagel's art though the guy who did um mm, broken yeah. age but I don't, what else did these guys make again oh yeah they published what remains of edith finch that's true yeah i heard that i'm was looking really at this cool. right i love edith. yeah you, they didn't they didn't make it they just okay. published it I, I, yeah. i'm glad i got convinced bunny how to play it. you you all should play edith finch because that game is the fucking shit okay all right yeah if, sure, you, if, if you had a review code to spare i totally would <laughs> You want to share play it off my PS4, Liam? Absolutely. Okay, it's it's only two hours long, but it was really fucking good, so... I hear. It might okay. be three hours with play share, though. <laughs> <laughs> good one. Okay. Um, Code Vein, it was literally just the same footage as before, right? So Still so hyped, though. Yeah. Still so hyped. <laughs> yeah. I know you are. Uh, still looks really cool, but again, yeah, I wish it was new footage. It's, it's a shame that... Um, I think this is an appropriate place to bring this up. Uh, Phil Spencer was uh, a few months ago talking about how he took a trip to Japan and he was going to try to get some Japanese stuff going on Xbox. I'm going to go cancel Scalebound. Um, yeah. It, it's 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 a shame that, you know, he took this trip to Japan and I mean, I'm sure there's other deals that have been made that'll come to fruition in time, but it's a shame that all we saw at E3 was two multi-platform Bandai Namco mm-hmm. games. Um, so, yeah, g- game looks cool. Uh, Maybe a little too moe for me personally. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna put my um, editor in chief from Reliant Horror and Blast here because we were all like watching E3 at the same time, and he said, "Can you record this Code Vein stuff?" And I said, "It's literally the same trailer, maybe just different music." And it says, "Well, maybe I'll have some kind of announcement at the end," and it just showed date 2018. And I said, "It's literally just the same thing." And he said, "No, oh. <laughs> he wanted me to there write was stuff, nothing. so it was, you know, yeah, just dunking on him." Okay. Um, Just co- copy your article from last year and paste it again. Exactly. Not last year, earlier this year. Um, mm. Tacoma. I forgot this existed until they reshowed the, until they showed that trailer again. Same. It looks neat. Yeah. Yeah. Gone. Gone Home is very fun if you imagine it as they're trying to troll you into thinking it's a horror game, and then you find out it's not. Then they got you. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine if Tacoma turns out to be something else by the end. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I, you know, I was pretty scared playing Gone Home initially because it was dark in the house and it was spooky. And then by the end of it, I was just kind of like, huh, all right. I guess that was that. And I think the most fun bit was getting this speed run trophy for beating the game in like under two minutes or some shit. Totally. But is like, there an actual trophy? For yeah, that. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Um, yeah, that game never. It didn't really like hit me in a big way or anything. Like the twist is that they're gay, but you know that's okay. Like that's not really a twist for me. That's just kind of like, oh, you're you're gay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. That's the best <laughs> summary of that I've ever heard in my life. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's that's what it is. That, that's right? it, really. I mean, it's like, like I mean, could you imagine we had gotten to the end? Like, like I'll put it this way: Could you imagine you'd gotten to the end and the twist was that the character was black? Like that would have been like offensive. So like mm. the fact that it's gay and people feel like it was so much more special is like that's that's more telling of how intolerant a lot of people have been towards homosexual Man. people. Yeah, and it, like, it, it really made an impact on people because it won Game of the Year that year at the award show. It did, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. I really like the promo art for that game. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah absolutely. Beautiful. <laughs> the house and the font really get me going. They're actually really nice. You know what would have been a good oh. twist? If you find out they were gay, and then you turn around, and then a zombie kills you. That would have been a twist. <laughs> that, right. Now, now we're stepping up. Now we're, we got the big money ideas going. Uh, Mr. I'm fed up of zombie games. No, no, no. Uh, it's I'll, fine. I'll, yeah, I'll look forward to how Tacoma <laughs> turns out, because... Yeah, the crew, the crew yeah. over there seemed like a really nice bunch. So. Yeah, um, yeah, and it's clear that their their previous game was made under like serious restrictions. Absolutely. Uh, mm-hmm. So it'll be neat now that it seems like they have more than enough money to do just about whatever they want in that like first person walk and explore Absolutely. kind of mm-hmm. framework. So yeah. Okay, uh, I guess we oh, I skipped over this. Uh, sea of Thieves. It looks all right. That looks really. Uh, I mean, I was really looking forward to it. Uh, I'm a big Rare fan. I honestly thought that what I saw looked very janky. Like, that gunplay does not look yeah, like the, it feels good. the combat good. looks not good at all. Yeah, like, it, think- like, the concept's cool, and I'm all aboard the idea of, um, of having your own crew and having a ship and all of that. Firing yourself out of a cannon is a really fun idea, but when they had this explanation of the mechanics, I was just thinking, okay, so... I go to islands and I loot things and then it's probably randomized loot drops. I don't know, obviously, but I would just say that's a safe bet. Um, and then sometimes there's some multiplayer and I'm just thinking about the longevity of that. And of course the idea of like a streamer playing that and having their own crew and having a lot of fun with that, that's probably great. But in terms of like gameplay longevity, I feel like there's a lot of games that have that progression and what I saw of that did not impress me very much. Outside of the art direction, the art direction's really nice, um, and I appreciate that a lot. But uh, it feels like what an old Rare game would feel like if they had a modern budget. But I just, what I saw of that did not look like it felt very good. And I'm just kind of tentative about it, I guess. I, I guess my main beef with Rare nowadays is it's not the same people that made Rare back in the old days. Absolutely. So you don't, they, have, they have no personality anymore over there, besides... Lots of motion control games. Yeah. Like a simile of what they used to be. Yeah, the, like the games, it's it's nice to look at, I guess. But I like I feel like it doesn't have any character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and that that's just my opinion, really. But like, I just when I look at it, I have a hard time. I mean, I, I'm not even a big guy for, for you co-op multiplayer stuff at all. And I and I don't have Xbox Live Gold, and I don't plan on having both the PS Plus and Gold sub. So like, it's not even on my radar for those reasons. Right. But and I would get on. I would get on PC anyway, so I wouldn't Same. have to deal with Xbox Live. <laughs> yeah, no, that's certainly true. Um, but like, when I look at the game, like, there's, you know, it, it's there's just nothing just that there. really grabs me. Like, yeah, uh, like, okay, so the podcast I recorded, the guys I recorded with were like, "Oh, this looks like it'll be pretty good," and I was like, "No, but like you said, the gunplay looks weird, and to me, it mm-hmm. just looks really easy." Yes. Like, like, and the skeletons pop up, and they have like like a static animation for way too long and then you shoot them yeah. and then they're just like ah I'm dead you well, know like oh well, when I look at it it reminds me of like a less exciting destiny if you took all the story and characters out and the good movement yeah oh uh, yeah yeah I yeah, suppose I so it. yeah like cuz I, I definitely feel like it's it's that's the kind of game it is that kind of shared world big multiplayer experience right where it's you and a, a group of people 
not so many randos, more just small groups. Because I, I, like, I like the idea of all of you trying to work shit. a ship together too, because it reminds me of like a multiplayer rocket slime kind of thing where you're all trying to bungle together and trying to get this thing working. But uh, yeah, yeah. But, but uh, there's a game slime. later on during rocket slime was a good game. <laughs> it was, but there's Still a game is. later on that apparently will do ship combat better that we'll talk about during Ubisoft's press mm-hmm. conference. Um, I will say, um, looking at people, a lot of people apparently talk about two things with this game. And that's either eating bananas whole or showing your map to people at inappropriate moments. I saw some of the map stuff, yeah. I saw the uh, I saw Griffin McElroy eating bananas whole, and I thought that was pretty great. Yeah, so <laughs> if it has anything to it, it's a sea of memes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Super Lucky's Tale. Um, might be fun. A... Didn't the trailer, did the trailer to you look like it was running at like 80% speed? Uh... Yeah, it looked that way. Because it looked like it should well. have been a little bit faster, like closer to a Mario world, but instead it was... Uh, kind of floaty yeah it, it had that look to me uh for sure although like aside from that um out of everything at that press conference i had a giant smile on my face that entire trailer it looks i'm a sucker for cute things uh every room in my house has some form of hello kitty in it so that trailer uh i just had the big screen on my face and it looks so happy and charming and i really i never got to play the original lucky's tale because i don't have an oculus so i'm really looking is this like a i'm unclear if this the, is like a um, sequel or a port to my understanding it's a sequel um, okay cool uh but um i just hope it's good i heard i heard Me a lot too. of things about how lucky's tale was just kind of drab and not that thrilling to actually play beyond the first few levels so i just hope hmm. it's good um yeah that's it i just hope it's good I like also, I really game, thought so. I really thought it was leading into a Conquer game too. I'm not even a Me big too. Conquer guy, but it seemed like that was going to be a Conquer game when you saw that little red tail fluffing about. Um, which I don't know. I don't know. I I, I hope it's good. I guess <laughs> got nothing. <laughs> okay, um, Cuphead. I'm glad it finally has a release date because yeah, Cuphead. It, it's turning into the the spy party of when's this game coming out? <laughs> yeah, although Spy Party still doesn't have his release date, does it? No. I forgot that existed, honestly. <laughs> it's at PAX every fucking year in the same corner, and I it's just it I kinda come to accept it at this point. Um Crackdown three. I I like Terry Crews. Yeah. And, that was a fun uh, trailer. Yeah. It uh It looks too much like I mean, Crackdown one to me in terms of appearance wise. To I me, guess. yeah. Uh, like it looks pretty good, but I just I don't know, man. It's not doesn't really thrill me either, yeah this, th- you know, this so. wasn't announced at any of the conferences but now they have to deal with agents of mayhem being a very similar looking game so i mean good yeah. luck because that's volition yeah it looks sort of like what agent of May- agents of mayhem is trying to do uh but not as good um yeah. agents of mayhem's iterating on that in a meaningful way crackdown 3 looks like a retread so um suma digital has a really hit or miss thing um with their games so i have a bad feeling even as a crackdown mm-hmm. fan this might just kind of be a miss you know i hope as it's not. a sonic all stars racing transformed fan i'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt but we'll see i guess <laughs> sure that's th- that the best racing game. game of all time maybe it is <laughs> okay good all right ashen that was just a trailer did you guys get anything out of that no it looks about the same as last time i saw it uh, Life is strange i'm down for more life is strange however that comes at the Absolutely. expense of possibly more warren and I could go my entire life without yeah. seeing more Warren slash Liam. <laughs> <laughs> my <Yeah>. favorite stalker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Shadow of War. Um, <laughs> I'm already kind of was already decided on getting the game, so I didn't really need to see much more of it. Although having that character interaction thing was kind of neat. Yeah, it was super good. He turns into Shrek. Yeah, <laughs> they did the thing. Yeah, it, it it looks like more of an iterative improvement over the last one than like a like an evolutionary improvement. But that's sure. not a bad thing. The first game was pretty good, so yeah, sometimes just like a little it. bit's all you need. You don't have to completely yeah. reinvent yourself, you know. Yeah, I, I I don't think it needs reinvention. Absolutely, it'll, it'll just be nice that it, it won't be held back by PS3 and 360 anymore. Um, mm-hmm. As much as those versions do exist, they're awful. Uh, but uh, you want me to put, hopefully they'll be gonna, able to make some I'm slightly bigger environments best friends and stuff. video on that one too because that thing, oh by all means that one is watch um, old footage uh, watch uh, footage of the last gen version of um, uh, Shadow Mordor because it, it is an adventure to see how the fuck that thing got out yeah there's it's just yeah it's just a really really awful version yeah it is mind blowing okay um Ori and the Will of the Wisps that looked fine I'm sure it's gonna be more Ori right so 
Yeah. Yeah. More power to mm-hmm. him. I really wish the Scream Lord came out on stage and starts singing along with the guy playing the piano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would have been great. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, we got a video for Anthem, and then they announced a whole bunch of backwards compatibility stuff, which, okay. So I had original Xbox One, and it was all right, but tell me what's to be excited about. So do you mean an original Xbox yeah, original or an X- Xbox One? <laughs> okay, God yeah. damn it. I, they, they got me. They got me. Um, I had the original Xbox, and that was okay, but you have to tell me what exclusives that has that people are interested about besides Christmas Skies. I, I, I mean, think... Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, man. Give me Blinks, give me Breakdown, and I'm good. Yeah, break, Breakdown's definitely a highlight. I heard some people I, like I Fusion when... Frenzy... That was okay, I think. It wasn't as good. No, no one likes that, man. That's a lie. <laughs> okay. That's my, a dirty lie. Yeah, my, Microsoft's got a fair little selection of games to put out, like Crimson Skies and stuff. Uh, but I definitely think it's it's more the third parties. Like, it would be really nice. It'll be really nice when Sega gets on there, because there's, like, uh, Sega Rally, Jet Set Radio Future. Okay, I'll, get, I'll, get, I'll fucking give you Jet Set Radio Future. Toe Jam Mineral uh, 3. Panzer Dragoon Orda, Toe Jam Mineral 3, uh, Gun Valkyrie. Yeah, Gun uh, Valkyrie's where what, it's at. Like, Smile Bits games. What you know, they, I'm excited They have for a lot of Sega stuff. Is the fact that the uh, Xbox original had the best version of all the multi-platform games back in the day. Usually. It did. Uh, yeah. And if all those come, I can play some fucking weird... Like, my Xbox game collection is massive, but half of it doesn't work on the 360, which might still be the case. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it would be nice to just have one platform. If, like, they get all the backwards compatibility, like, sort of. Yeah, I mean, especially with how they are improving the performance and loading times for the backwards compatibility like they did with uh, 360. Um, But there there are some other titles like Ninja Gaiden Black as well that that are not not to be slept on at all. So there's there's, there's a lot of good stuff. I'm really looking forward to the killer app of backwards compatibility, Chicago Enforcer, my favorite Xbox game. (laughs) I guess that'll also give us a Metal Wolf Chaos too if they get a Japanese support, right? Ooh, I love uh, that. As as much as I'd be like happy if they did, it wouldn't be great for most people because it's still like the dialogues in English, but all the menus are all the menus and all the instructions are still in gotcha, Japanese. Gotcha. So, I I think Metal Wolf really needs the Phantom Dust treatment, and they just need a company to just go in there and rejigger it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I agree. Just having back compat, I don't think. I don't even think we'd get it released here. Like maybe in Japan, it would release, but yeah. Oh, I forgot. Uh, Sega also has both Otogi games. <laughs> um, I, I'm just going down the list. There's a lot. There's a lot of good stuff. The Time Splitters games, Mech Assault. Like uh, I think someone already said Blinks. Like there's a lot though. Brute so. Force? Question mark. Brute Force. Why not? Bl- yeah. Blood Wake. Yeah, sure. Why not? Blood Wake, the best boat Knights, combat. Knights game. of the Old Republic. Mech Assault One and Two, right? Yep. Okay, damn, you guys are showing me up. Well, thanks. Now I know about some games Ooh. I actually want to play. <laughs> um, the the good version of Psychonauts. Yes. Um, the Xbox version of Psychonauts mm. is like, that was, the, that was the lead platform, so that's the good gotcha, one. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, the original Xbox had a pretty solid library, actually. Yeah, Jade Empire. Uh, ooh, Moro- yeah. Maybe not Morrowind, Jade Empire. potentially. <laughs> that's how I first played The <laughs> concept was good. Um, execution, not so much for me. Morrowind? Morrowind, why not? Yeah. In Japan, you could get uh, Shin Megami Tensei 9. Okay, Breaking Cave Fave to listeners, but I'm going to speed this up slightly just because otherwise we're going to spend all day on this and we're in an hour. <laughs> um, so final score, you guys think? Um, I drop a four because there were so many fucking games that looked really good. I was doesn't really care too much about the, uh, the Xbox console. One X, but uh, backwards compatibility and video games are nice. I, I sure, I'd give, it, I'd give it a three. Yeah. I think I'm kind of, yeah, 3, 3.5 kind of area. Uh, the only stuff that I wanted to play was uh, Assassin's Creed Origins, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, Code Vein, and Cuphead, I think. And all of the Wild oh, and Anthem, I guess. But, like, like, most of it just didn't thrill me. A lot of it didn't, like, you know. I guess we, f- we forgot to talk about Anthem. Are you guys going to interested in that at all? Anth- Anthem was really cool. Anthem was really it cool. It looks cool. Actually, yeah. I'm down. Um, I, I think, like, final thought on Xbox for me is, like, I was really excited when they said it was going to be two hours long because I felt like that meant, okay, they've got stuff to show. They're going to show me why I need an Xbox One X or Scorpio at the time. Uh, and I feel like my expectations might have been a bit high uh, because I thought that, you know, two hours showing off a new console, you probably got some good shit to show. And I was I was actually very disappointed by the mm-hmm. uh, lack of first party. Um, so yeah, same. That a lot of, lot of good looking games though. 
Yeah, all the indie games that look cool, I'm just going to play on the PC anyway, so... Yeah. I think I think Ooblets was on screen for a second in one of their... Uh, <laughs> also Dunk Lords. one of their things, and Ooblets is awesome. Also Dunk Ooblets Lords, yeah. Great. It does. Okay, um, I guess two thoughts I want to say quickly on Anthem is, one, um, I don't know why the players were shitting on Kim so much, because he was higher level than them, and maybe he actually had, like, a right? job and shit. Maybe he was doing stuff right? instead of playing video games all day. <laughs> um, and also, um, when the guy was first getting into the suit... It looked like it was really hot, and that would be really uncomfortable to wear. Yeah, yeah. I, I was so not thinking it would be good. Like, I was thinking of sweat the whole <laughs> time. I was like, oh my god, the main characters are fucking sweating out the ass. They have exhaust port for that. <laughs> I guess. I don't, know if, back flap. I don't know if it helps. You saw that padding, right? Like, shit, that can't be comfy. That's what powers the jetpacks, guys. Sweat. It accumulates it all. It's steam-powered. Like, what if, what if something's chafing? You can't adjust anything. Like... Oof. I don't like that. Okay, let's move on to the shortest presentation, besides Nintendo, uh, Bethesda. So I went to their showing last year, and that was all right, but this time it seemed kind of like, we have to do this because we do this every year, and here's some shit we have. Yeah, I mean, they still had a lot of new stuff to announce, but I didn't think, like, I didn't feel like anything jumped out at me as, like, really fresh, I guess. Um, I, I like Doom, like but it, I'm, if... I, I don't need to play a different version of it in VR, and... I don't yeah. want to play Fallout 4 ever again in any form. So. <laughs> yeah, if, if I'm not mistaken, literally everything at their show was either a remake or re-release, which is fine, or a game we knew about before, or a sequel. Um, I don't think there was anything actually new. new. Uh, so, like, nothing really thrilled me, but, like, the VR titles were cool. I like that they're, like, I like seeing third parties push on VR, because I do think VR is awesome. Um, Evil Within 2 was cool i wish they showed more gameplay or, or like a new gameplay system perhaps you know uh but we kind of saw very little of that on stage i really didn't like that song cover either <laughs> um, no me neither the yeah. trailer really didn't do much for me the the gameplay after i liked a lot more but i like, think i'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to start much. some kind of tumblr blog to keep track of all these trailers that have covers really slow covers of existing songs because all, <laughs> yeah. all of them have been terrible except for strafe's trailer <laughs> with um all star by smash mouth somebody told me the world was gonna roll me I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed that was amazing I am I, I'm really excited for Evil Within 2 I I feel like I'm in the rare party that I, I did not just think the first one was pretty good I thought the first Evil Within was actually excellent I, I adore that game um, it's, it's it really felt, good yeah it felt like PS2 era survival horror weirdness um, and that's my favorite kind of survival horror so I'm down for more of that maybe with a little less artificial difficulty that would be nice what do you mean by that um, I feel like the first Evil Within put you in a lot of situations, even if you were really good at item management, where it's like, okay, you have two shots, here's a boss stage, you can't go back, good luck. Um, Jim Sterling touched on that a lot, little in his review. Um, I kind of agree with him on that. Yeah, there were certainly some some tight situations in that game. I finished it a fair few times. I, f I found like the the um, Akumu difficulty was just ridiculous as well. I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm so fed up of like highest difficulties being the absurd, like... One hit, you're dead. No continues. Your save file gets deleted. I'd rather than be more like um, new boss attacks or something completely different. Yeah. Well, or just don't like you know. <laughs> I mean, that's what, that's what, <laughs> just that's don't. what MMOs do. They like, <laughs> and it's, like a, it's, a, it's a stupid thing to say. Like, I'd rather have nothing. But like, uh, go on, Austin. That's sorry. what MMOs do. They add new mechanics, and that's yeah. fun, in my opinion. It is the the Skyrim DLC with Legend of Zelda looks like the goofiest shit. That or it probably already yeah, you exists. can play as Lonk from Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and from what I've seen of the footage, it looks like it barely runs on the Switch. Maybe it's just me, but uh, do people yeah. still want to play Skyrim? Is that a thing? I, I gave that game a five about five, but I'm tired of seeing it at E3. I, I I mean, hasn't that game? I forget. I forget what the sales numbers were, but didn't that game peak over 10 million? Like, yeah, of course, lots of people are gonna want to play Skyrim for sure. In sure. VR, that's like what I wanted in VR. I stopped playing Skyrim oh, at like 60 hours in because I was like, one day I'll be able to play this in VR. And what do you know? Yeah, for 60. The VR looks cool. Yeah. I, I I'm I'm at an impasse because I have to decide which one I want to get. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to wait for them Digital Foundry videos and see how the Switch 1 stacks up. Because, mm -hmm. 
No, just get both. Yeah. Do you want to play in bed naked or do you want to play with Fuck a Fuck just getting both. Oh my god, I'm not getting both Skyrims. <laughs> Holy shit. Imagine if it had like cross save though and you could play it in VR or portable. Oh, well, you know, that would that would suddenly make it like actually a thought in my mind. Yeah. yeah. But um, let's see. It seems over over 20 million units of Skyrim as of, Dang, okay. as of right. 2014. Like there's a big market for Skyrim and I, I like I, it a I, lot. I like I, it a lot. It's just, it's, there's been five million versions of it, right? I, I I see a lot of people hating on that, and I don't I don't get it because it's just like, well, just don't buy it, you know? Like it's sure. for people who want it, you know? Is, I think it's like, just a bit of fatigue because twice during this conference, I heard the Skyrim. We music. Said, yeah, twice we got I Skyrim. Heard, no, yeah. no, 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 no. It, it yeah. appeared like three times, but twice, like twice I heard the music. I went up and went to use the bathroom because I said, okay, that's the theme that I get to use to take a break. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> Did you know that there are only two versions of Skyrim? Just saying. Yeah, there's the original fucking game, and then there's the legendary collect DOTY version. That's it. Okay. Okay. If you say so. All right. Um, score. I, I give them a two. Oh, wait. They showed off uh, Wolfenstein. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Sorry, uh, yeah, the Wolfenstein trailer was kind sorry, of the gem I'm doing, of Sorry, I'm doing some ar- history erasure shit right now. Um, yeah, it looks really yeah, good. Yeah, some of that super bunny hop tech. <laughs> That game looks... I like Wolfenstein The New Order way more than I like Doom, so I'm super hyped. I will say that trailer was cut kind of weird. Sure. Because, it, you know, it, it went to it went to Milkshake Nazi and then suddenly jumped to a random Miller scene of them talking to two Resistance members, and then it played... You know, it just jumped all over the place, I think, for me. Yeah, that cut was really weird. I mean, I get they're trying to show different aspects of the game, but they could have, you know, made one full, like, song play through entire thing or have um, better um, transitions, mm-hmm. I guess. It just seemed all over the place. Sure, and the weird, sure. The weird cartoon thing at the end. <laughs> I thought that, that was, was really great. cute. I yeah. love that. I'm, I'm excited for that game. I really liked the first one, and this looks like it's going to go even more in a really far, even more batshit than Nazis on the moon direction, and I am all aboard that for that. Yeah, I, I'm almost assuredly not going to play it, but sure. it looks fucking great, so... I, I hope they learned their lesson after the last game and Doom that um, maybe they should make like objectives to learn new skills, not you have to find hidden things in stages to do all these really obtuse kill strategy things. Because th- that's yeah. my bit. That was my big turnoff for both Wolfenstein and Doom, where you had to uh, kill these certain things in a certain way in order to unlock this new skill. And being the completionist that I was, I had to do them. So yeah, I prefer just I just want to kill Nazis with a hatchet. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay final score I, I, I like i said i'd give him two out of five yeah i'd give him like a 2.5 yeah i'll have to flip um, similarly i'm i'm probably at like a three because i think doom vfr was really exciting for me um sure. and i do th- i do think a lot of people are downplaying like dishonored death of the outsider that's pretty cool it's a standalone like a big standalone dishonored title i mean a smaller big standalone dishonored title obviously it's not going to be like a full full title that's um, a lot of titles but like but like yeah the the probably like a yeah 2.5 to 3 kind of same range as ea for me all right uh ubisoft i can't believe that mario's plus rabbits was the most exciting thing that i saw happen i'm so excited for that game like miyamoto came out on stage and i just felt this infectious like happiness come over me yeah i'm pretty down because I was, I was always like, I'll, I'll see what help plays like. I don't give it a try. But as soon as I saw it was fucking XCOM, I lost my shit. Yeah, I wasn't expecting XCOM. Yeah, it, it, uh, it, you know, despite all the leaks and all the rumors and 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 shit, it it still managed to have a really imposing presentation, and it looked really good. I think the graphics, not even by the standard of the Switch, but just in general, the graphics were really good. Mm-hmm. Um, the gameplay looks enjoy. Like assuming they've you know, done their work on mimicking that XCOM good. The gameplay should be quite enjoyable. Um, they've been working on it for three years. That's fucking nuts. It looks, game, it like, looks they kept good, it, though. It's so fucking polished. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like three years. That's what I'm saying. Like, like fuck. Damn. It's coming out in August. Uh, That's lo- soon. Yeah. Looks yeah, my good. Editor, my editor played it and said it just feels really good and runs really good. So it's like, not only is that like demonstrated in the trailer, people who got their hands on it say it's excellent. So I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty the, down. Yeah. The treehouse presentation was glowing. Go ahead. Uh, I was saying, I just, I really hope they kept uh, permadeath because I just want to send <laughs> rabbits to their death repeatedly. I wish it kept the you know, like, threat loss system from XCOM, so Bowser's threat would get larger and larger as you play. Yes, you know, yes, I, absolutely. I actually tweeted that out, and one of the developers from Ubisoft, I think they work on Siege, just tweeted yeah. at me, no. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, but that that was a surprise for me. Um, Assassin's Creed Origins. I think my favorite thing about the Assassin's Creed Origins presentation was um, Ubisoft's presence of mind to not play a five to seven minute long trailer for Assassin's Creed yeah. Origins. Um, bearing in mind, we had all just seen like seven minutes of gameplay at Microsoft conference the day before. Uh, they did not make us sit through a full thing. They showed us a quick story trailer. They cut away to some dudes who said, hey, we're going to be playing it after the show. If you want to watch Assassin's Creed, come check it out after the show. And then they just moved on. Uh, so, like, I think the game looks really exciting. But mm-hmm. I also just got it, like, just kudos to Ubisoft for having the presence of mind to realize that we all saw a lot of gameplay for it at, at Microsoft's conference the day before. And we didn't need to see more. Yep. So, Thank you, Ubisoft. <laughs> that game looks pretty fun. I'm I have wanted an ancient Egypt Assassin's Creed for a while, and I believe the director of Black Flag is working on it. And Black Flag is one of the only Assassin's Creeds I like, so that's exciting for me. That's really exciting for me. I'm a dumb person who likes wanted, so I got really happy when bolts curved. I mean, arrows curved. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I wonder how they're going to explain that, but I guess they have giant serpents now, so just out in the middle of the uh, middle, middle of the dungeon. So I guess they can do anything. Assassin's Creed lore is nonsense. You don't you don't need to explain anything. At yeah, this because point. They're, they're, because <laughs> I already knew there were giant monsters and aliens and shit like that. But I'm glad they're just going full on. Okay, you can fight these things now. Yeah, I mean, not? people are people are jumping off buildings into things of hay and surviving. Yeah. So. Well, one guy broke his leg in the first game. Remember? <laughs> you know that's true. He yeah, did. He fucked yeah. up bad. Um, the crew too. <laughs> I kind of I kind of wish it was just. Oh right. I kind of wish it was just called Cruise in USA, and I'd, I'd totally be on board with that. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Otherwise, that game did nothing for me. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I don't care. Okay, same. It's it's neat how many vehicle types they have, I guess, but that's not. Yeah, South Park, it exists. It's coming. Continues to exist. Uh, Th- Call Girl right. is a great superhero is, yeah. name. <laughs> and the the title still manages to make me laugh. So. Yeah, every time. Yeah. Okay, that first one was all right. So, um, Skull and Bones. Um. I liked right. I liked Assassin's Creed Four, so maybe I'll like this. I like I want I want to see how monster battles work because that looks actually pretty fun. If it the Kraken is large, yeah. as large as they're seeing it to be, yeah. Um, I I uh I wasn't a huge fan of the sailing in uh, Assassin's Creed Four. I, I only played um, Freedom Cry, which was like the seven hour like standalone DLC. That actually campaign. might be better because you don't get fatigued after like twenty hours of it. Yeah, I actually kind of wish they would do that for every Assassin's Creed game, so I could just play a seven-hour version. <laughs> but um, uh, I, I say this as someone who finished Unity and Syndicate, so um, uh, I'm I was actually kind of glad to see that you don't have direct control over a single character on the boat, as in you don't disengage from the controls on the boat. Yeah. Like in Assassin's Creed Four, you control a human who gets off and jumps onto other ships and fights other people on other ships. And I think that was my least favorite part of Assassin's Creed 4's boating was when I had to go back to my ship. It was always such a tedious thing. What if I miss the boat? What if I have to fucking yeah, swim yeah. back over to my boat? Like, ah! Right. Um, so it's nice that you just control the boat. Um, <laughs> and when they did, when they did a, uh, when they boarded an enemy, it was just a glorified melee kill. Um, which I was like, yeah, cool, good. You just get to play as the boat. You don't get that boring bit of, like, walking between boat. You just boat. I guess it's cool though. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm still not a huge multiplayer guy, uh, so we'll see. And I think I think Ubisoft Shanghai's record is a little mixed, but we'll see. What else we'll have see. they done? Like what uh, else? Mo- mostly mostly porting stuff, and okay. I believe like handheld versions of console games. But oh. let me just check to see if I'm missing um, any meaningful titles. I think they might have also done I Am Alive. Oh. Uh, I think <laughs> I think that was good. one of their. Yeah, that's that, that was good. that was quite a while ago. In all fairness, the first but, chapter sure. was good. Then it turned to something I didn't like anymore. Yeah, I think I Am Alive may have been their only original title. Hey, the portable uh, versions of Michael Jackson Experience that had the best DRM I've ever seen oh, in the game. Uh, they also did Tom Clancy's End War Online, which was the online version of End War. Uh, it was for Asia. Uh, and yeah, they're so they're mostly a support studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, congrats to them getting to do a yeah. big project like this. But uh, we'll let's see how it goes down. Um, let's see. Sub Zero came out and just did Just Dance, and then some singer that I didn't know. What they, a you know. I'm glad it was over in three minutes. <laughs> a lot of people are like, like, oh, 
Ubisoft is cringe. Like all Ubisoft conferences are cringe. This had to be the least cringy one. Yeah. They've ever done. And like even the Just yeah. Dance thing, it was like it was just a little cute dance thing. And yeah, and it I'll, was give, fucking I'll give weird. credit to dancers. They're good dancers. It's just it's just not for me. Yeah. And and that they announced K pop in these games. Like Yeah, they had uh they had Miku in the last one too, which yeah. is neat. Yeah. Uh, so you know what? More power to them. That that's just more weird diversity, I guess, for the Just Dance games. Yeah, unless I'm remembering incorrectly, I liked how they were just kind of in and they did a little medley, like three very different types of music, yep. and they were just out. They didn't even play a trailer, did nope. they? Nope. Well, you you know what so, it is. <laughs> yeah, so like I actually kind of appreciated it because I was like, okay, that was fun, and uh, I like K-pop, so I was like, oh, neat. And they were, and then they were gone. Like that, like it was kind of like the Assassin's Creed Origins one, where they like they knew the brevity was kind of its strength, I guess. Mm-hmm. And I was like, ah, okay, that happened. It was fun. Okay, I'm Starlink. Um, I'm yeah, I'm big into Toys yeah. for Life. Um, I might, the, I might force myself to skip on this one because I know I'd spend a lot of money on stupid ship. But I think it's I think nah, it's really, need it, dude. I think it's really smart to make a kind of adult themed. Hey, you can make your own ships and they look really cool. Yeah, that's what I like about it the most. How it's like a it seems like it's slanting a little more uh, higher in like what what age it's targeting. I mm-hmm. guess. Uh, and yeah, I, I dig that. Because, um, like, I, I think I'm down. Um, I, I was not expecting the toys to life aspect, and I started laughing really hard because I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> and when they showed, like, this big plastic thing attaching onto the Switch which, uh, switch controller, I just about died. Was it a Switch or to... was it a PS4 controller? Both. Uh, it, Both? Oh. They, they showed, they, yeah, they showed uh, the Xbox One pad as well in the trailer. Damn. They got all of them. Um, but I, I think, yeah, this is Ubisoft Toronto's first like original title. Um, so I'm 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 interested. Yeah, I, I'm happy it's on Switch as well. I, I'd be very keen to get the yeah. Switch. Yeah, and they say you can play um, the whole thing without having the Toys for Life thing too. So I think that's good for people who just want to actually save money. Yeah, uh, definitely, or save space or whatever. Yeah, um, I, I don't know where I put all my Disney Infinity figures. They're all just in I box. have all like of them, it's... and they're yeah, they're just taking space in. Uh, my garage. <laughs> yeah, same. They're in like a little bin. Some of them are actually busted. Uh, granted, they're really cheap now, so <laughs> they are. Yeah, yeah. I bought a Buzz Lightyear one the other day for forty nine cents. It was new. It was sealed. Nice. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, Rip. But, Rip. But Star, 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 Starlink. Uh, I I don't know. Looks neat. We'll we'll see. I gotta say, I am so fed up of idiots online who are like, looks like No Man's Sky. This is probably going to be awful. Looks like another No Man's Sky. Like, yes, the game's in space. I can see that. <laughs> You're stupid. Yeah, Star Fox, like, that, that's definitely, that's my favorite No Man's Sky. Like, <laughs> like, 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 yeah, like anything that uses this color palette and is in space just, no Man's Sky. just gets that. And it's like, fucking stop. Like, holy shit. Do you, More like No Man's Buy. Do you not understand how <laughs> video games work? You're funny. It's a good joke, Thomas. <laughs> You know it. <laughs> you, you good kid. Okay. Speaking of, speaking Thomas. of jokes, um, this the next game they announce expansion pack for sleep. I mean steep. Sorry. Um, I'll give them I'll give them credit. Um, they it's turning into an Olympic based thing is probably the best way for them to get more support. Some power power to them. I just didn't feel anything for steep at all. Wasn't the game alright? Yeah. Uh, I hear. I, I think um, everyone just slept on it. Like actually, because uh, it came out in like yeah. December or November and. I didn't know until I just went to a game store and I saw it on the sh- shelf and I was like, oh, I kind of wanted this, but it's $60. Yeah, no, it, it, it was a bit of a crowded season and it just kind of, you know, didn't It wasn't didn't bad. I, I, I heard it, it, it was all right. Launch. Yeah, I bought it at launch. It was fine. Like, it, cool. Yeah. I, to be honest, I'm still actually like interested in the Switch version. Um, yeah, which, same. Which is still supposed to be coming. So uh, I, I got to say, I was happy to see them get the Olympic thing. It hasn't been a little, it hasn't been a while since we've had, or it has been a while, pardon, since we've had like an Olympic sports game that's not a Mario yeah. and Sonic one. Uh, and while they're not for me, I appreciate that that's like a cool thing to have because it's usually such a collection of sports. And while this doesn't cover the full roster of sports represented at the olympics at the winter olympics um i'm sure it will be a better winter olympic sport game than any other serious one that's ever been done before yeah so. absolutely it's not very hard you don't yeah. get waluigi well, though sadly that no for sure but like that that i do think is neat because there's there's been so many junk olympic winter games in the past uh, again, not referring to the Mario and Sonic ones, but like the actual serious quote-unquote ones. Uh, so it'll be nice to actually see one that'll probably be 
quite good, I guess, in the relative scale of things. Um, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Far yeah. Cry 5, uh-huh. bitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Far Cry looks fine. I'm worried that the gameplay is going to be too similar to old ones, so it's going to have to survive on the narrative alone, which is fine, but it looked alright. But you get a well, dog if, if in this If there was one, one game to pick... You get Sorry? a dog in this one. Yeah. I like. I love Bell's going to say 5. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, Thomas, if there's one Far Cry whose narrative might be interesting, well, you sure picked the right yeah. one. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it looks fine. I yeah, I, didn't, I wasn't really into the third or fourth, so I'm, you know. But I hey. watched a... I like Primal. Looks, yeah. I watched an extended gameplay trailer uh, on uh, PlayStation's official web, uh, YouTube channel, which was unfortunately running at 20 FPS, but uh, the when, when they walked inside the houses and, like, were you know, using the environment to hide and it was America and I've been to Montana and I see all this shit that's so familiar. <laughs> I'm like, Ooh, Ooh, that's good. That fit, that hits a weird spot that never really gets touched upon. And I super dig. Yeah. That. Yeah. Uh, Elias, we had our own like uprising in Oregon a little while ago that lasted for like a week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was, yeah, so- it was, it was really short. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the, those people are basically going to be the bad guys in this, and that's interesting. I'm I'm excited to see how that plays out. Uh, I'm also uh, dreading it because if you think about it, like if you think about video games, uh, especially AAA ones, handling topical material, uh, that that very rarely goes well. And I'm really wondering how that's going to pan out. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, sure, but uh, I, I'm interested. Know. I'm intrigued. It almost has an Outlast 2-ish vibe to it, too, with the whole religion aspect to it. And I loved Outlast 2, so, you know. Sure, yeah. Uh, unless, unless you're part of a, gra- a crazy gun cult, I don't think you should really identify with these guys, though. Like, I've seen a lot... I've seen a lot of people upset about the, the, the representation there, but, like, when you look at the trailers, this is clearly, like, a crazy cult. Oh, yeah. This is not regular Christians who are kind of into guns. And I mean, guns. they, they don't like, even identif- identify yeah. themselves as American. They change the flag into something their own corrupted version of it. Yeah. So they're just something yeah, exactly. different. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey yes. news! <laughs> so, um, the big reveal for them was a trailer for Beyond Good and Evil 2. What do you guys think? Did you guys know that Ubisoft likes the word fuck? <laughs> uh, I, Do I ever now? Yeah. Fucking fuck fuck. That was basically be a good and evil too. But also at the same time, I'm excited because watching that trailer, I was like, damn, it's like I'm watching the fifth element and rogue galaxy at the same time. And if there's one thing I like, it's the fifth element and rogue galaxy. Smash them together. Put beyond good and evil two on the title. Have a talking monkey. Who's I'll got take a pirate. It. A uh, sailor mouth, excuse me. I guess a pirate mouth in this case. And uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I'm um, ex- I don't need to see gameplay. Just show me a cool trailer. That's it. I'm excited that um, and like Ansel has finally like he gets to not only make the second Beyond Good and Evil, but he gets he gets to make a game that has a budget again. Like as much as mm-hmm. I as much as I loved uh, those two really good Rayman games they put out a few years ago. I mean, it was very clear that. Ubisoft didn't necessarily want to risk a lot of money on Ansel making a new project, um, and it seems like that he finally has like their blessing to blow a budget on his really cool creativity. And I'm really excited um, about where this goes. I mean, and if it plays, if it's mechanically similar to the first one, um, even better because that first one still kind of holds up. Yeah, yeah, the first game I, I find absolutely does still hold up. It's, mm-hmm. it's. I mean, it's. it's pretty straightforward like futuristic zelda kind of game yeah. um i do think like even just looking at the tiny snippets of gameplay like it's clearly going to be really different there's characters jetpacking around and like yeah. boy is that not something you get to do in the original um some there, there was a very big long write-up of a uh, behind closed doors demo for it um talking about how michel Ancel was showing off the scale and scope of the universe and how he could zoom in from uh out in the the star systems and and go into details on individual planets like cool. going as close to like little statues on the planet as he could and showing that like yeah there's there's this is you know this is kind of i don't know how much you guys are up on the original like the original game but th- I, that was one of their ambitions for the first mm-hmm. one was like getting a bunch of planets in and stuff like that and i i don't want to spoil the first game but they don't quite get a bunch of planets in um yeah so 
it, it's nice that they're going to be able to to act on that. Um, I, I do think I've seen a lot of people react in such a way that I feel like it's a bit of a monkey paws wish for a lot. Uh, in that it's not going to be the same as the original game. Of like, course not. It's not. Oh, yeah. It's going to be, it's going to have online, it's going to have cooperative multiplayer, there's a create a character confirmed as the main character. Um, it's going to be different. It's not going to be the same. It's not going to be, it's not going to follow up the um, intense cliffhanger that the first game left on. It is also, it takes place before. Yeah, it's a prequel, um, yeah. But then again, Metal Gear Solid 2 ended on the same note before one going into 3. <laughs> Yeah, somewhat, yeah. Um, so, like, it's going to be different. Like, it may as well be a totally different game, but I'm still quite excited as a fan. Uh, just, I just want to see if they can do it. That's it. Yeah, I, I, mean, I have good faith in Michel Ancel. Like, his titles have been, if not good, then at least, uh, then at very least imaginative yeah. ever since the last Beyond Good and Evil. So, you know, I think he's put out six or seven games since then, and even the bad ones were at least creative, yeah. so... Yeah, I mean, I, I there's definitely a situation where it's like, yeah, I do, I would like more of an iteration on the gameplay and mechanics of the first one. However, I mean, it's been, what, 13 to 15 years since that game came out? I mean, expecting it to be a, just like that with prettier graphics is super unrealistic, you know? People mad about, yeah. people mad that it's not going to be that, I think that, that's a little silly. That's a little, that that's an unrealistic expectation. Well, I, I, I'd argue there's no rule that a game has to be the same genre as the original one i mean we wouldn't have street Absolutely. fighter 2 if it was the same as street fighter 1 in the same sense as the fighter yeah. we wouldn't have gotten breath of the wild yeah without yeah, yeah. I, I feel like people are the most taken aback by the uh, online multiplayer and stuff like i think it was a given that it was going to be an open world mm -hmm. game um as opposed to the more zelda like structure so that that kind of like somewhat open world structure um but i do think some people are taken aback by the multiplayer which is like yeah, and like the no no designed main character and stuff like that. There's a few things that I, I get it. As much as I'm I'm still really excited for it, I kind of I do get where some of those complaints come from because it's like it's not going to be a similar experience. Especially it's be very like, different. Especially because like Jade was such a memorable character and I liked her a lot, and so that you you are losing a little bit there for sure. Yeah, definitely. There, there was uh, there was some concept art from a guy's portfolio a few years back. Uh, concept for Beyond Good and Evil Two, uh, and I mean, there's been fucking concepts for this game flung about for the last ten years, right? Yeah. Um, but that that one was fairly recent in the grand scheme of things, so I think it's it's worth mentioning for a sec. Uh, there was concept art of like a really really young Paige and Jade's father being like partners and stuff so i am hoping that they'll appear at some point in the game yeah i don't know we'll see um did page in that i forgot in that image did he have like a regular human hand or he have a pig hand because i remember something being weird about that no nah, he was a pig okay good he's he's a kid, kid pig because he was like he's young <laughs> oink, oink. <laughs> okay um i'd give ubisoft a four out of five for me mm, 3.5 i'm gonna say three for me uh, I, I think I'm kind of on the 3.54 kind of area. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the strong bits were really strong. Uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2, Mario and Rabbids Battle Kingdom, real strong. Uh, Starlink for me also really jumped out as really strong. I know Skull and Bones did for some people, not so much for me. Um, so I, I'd say like 3.54 kind of area. Yeah. I, I'm sorry I'm giving such nebulous scores. <laughs> That's fine. You're you, you, you're, you're you. You do what you want to do. Okay, only two conferences left. Thanks. This is <laughs> We're in the final lap. It is here in the podcast that we reach the end of the first half. Tune in next time when we cover the last of the conferences and also some of your questions. Thanks, and see you soon. Motherfucker. Oh. just begun. That's why we brought in you. You, 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 you got the town. Drop it. Now it's time to get to work. Uh -huh.